Sorry. I'm just really tired of these trans tropes in movies and TV. Hey friends, it's Pride Month. Yay! So let's celebrate because it's a great time for trans visibility in media, right? Eh, not quite. While it's awesome to celebrate how far we've come with seeing trans folks on screen, we have to recognize that not all representation is good representation. Quality, not just quantity, matters because 84% of Americans only learn about trans people through the images they see in media. That means as a cisgender woman or a woman who is assigned female at birth, I'd only be adding to the problem if I just spouted facts at you. So I invited my friend, Patty Harrison, to help out. Hey, Patty. Wait, so does that mean that 84% of Americans are watching me right now? <laughs> no, it, it just means that over 270 million Americans don't know any trans people, so their only exposure is through media. Oh, I can't screw this up. No, Patty, the point of this video is that you shouldn't have to be perfect when representing the trans community. Just be authentically yourself. Oh yeah, just be me. So fire up that projector, because here are five trans tropes in media. Number one, gender identity as a punchline. Which played in a theater near you in Zoolander 2. The comedy sequel features a non-binary character, which sounds amazing, but it was played by cis actor Benedict Cumberbatch, largely to comedic effect. If an identity is a punchline, then you're kind of teaching the audience that it's cool to make fun of it. One of the jokes is Owen Wilson asking the character whether they have a hot dog or a bun. Also, don't ask trans people about their genitalia. It's offensive. And I don't ask you about your junk or what it smells like, even though I do wonder sometimes. Number two, trans trickery. Which you may have seen in the Zac Efron movie, Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates. The title characters are, you guessed it, looking for wedding dates. Mike and Dave's Craigslist ad goes viral, and one responder is a man wearing a wig to trick them into thinking he's a woman because he really wants to go on a vacation. Hilarious. <laughs> Now, as Glad points out, it actually seems this character is not actually trans, but this funny moment perpetuates the outdated notion that people use gender presentation as a trick to get what they want, when in reality, trans folks present as their true gender only to be more themselves. Number three, trans identity as a plot twist. From Ace Ventura to Pretty Little Liars, Hollywood loves making gender identity part of the big reveal. If you've seen Pretty Little Liars, you know that the whole series was building up to the identity of the villain. Spoiler alert, at the end of season six, fans got their answer. Even worse spoiler alert, the shell fell into the trap of using gender identity as a plot twist and associating it with criminality. They're also robbing the character of nuance by making their coming out a dramatic plot point and not a major life decision. Which brings me to something I need to tell you. Francesca, I'm trans. Uh, I know. Oh. <laughs> Duh. Cool. Yeah. Number four. Dumb Science. The recently released and thankfully recently forgotten action movie, The Assignment, stars Michelle Rodriguez as an accidental trans person because a vengeful doctor performs gender confirmation surgery on Michelle's character. That's, that can be right, is it? Okay, so that's art. Someone made that and that's art. Okay, great. Gender confirmation surgery is a huge undertaking that is a years-long process. It involves counseling, hormone treatment, preparation, oh, and a lifetime of being a trans person. It's not a revenge plot. Number five, trans folks played by cis actors. Finally, roles for them. Did you notice that everyone we mentioned is not trans? Everyone. Benedict Cumberbatch, not trans. Bob Turton, who tried to date Mike and Dave, not trans. Vanessa Ray, who played Cece Drake, not trans. Michelle Rodriguez, who played a character who inexplicably was made trans as an act of revenge, not trans. <laughs> but what about the argument that they're actors and acting is about playing someone that's different than you? Currently, the roles available to trans actors are few and far between. And when they do get a role, it's usually limited to playing a character who's written to be trans. So if a cis actor takes that role, there's almost nothing left which is exactly why we need even more trans representation in media, so that 84% of the country can see the diversity of trans experiences. I mean, no one person can represent a whole community. Plot twist, or can they? No, I, I don't think they can. Oh, yeah, you're right. Why did I say that? Thanks for watching, and thanks to our special guest, Patty Harrison. We'll see you next time right here on Decoded.